Welcome back, beautiful people, to another episode of Trey, the Terrible Collector. On today's episode, we are going to be breaking into another one of the Toy Biz spinoff uh, lines. This is the Marvel's Most Wanted series. Uh, this one came out in 1998, so very close to the end of the um this line before they started to transition over to the Marvel Legends figures. Um, this Marvel's Most Wanted gives them an opportunity to put out some collector's edition figures, some things that normally wouldn't sell to the kids, but um, for the higher end collectors, they could put out a little bit more money into the box art, a little bit more money into the sculpts, and come up with some things that people were looking for, but wouldn't really fit in with the normal um, cartoon toys and everything like that. Uh, so for this line, um, it, they're called Marvel's Most Wanted. It says that they're the people spoke and we listened. For months now, collectors have been requesting that specific action figures be made of their favorite characters. So now Toy Biz has put together a special assortment of these highly anticipated action figures. The first one that we'll see is going to be Blink, um, hugely popular in the Age of Apocalypse uh, storyline. She also then featured in Exiles. Um, a very cool character. Honestly, a little bit surprising that I don't have a figure of her yet. Um, the next one is going to be X-Man, who is a an alternate reality version of Cable. Um, we've opened about 15 Cables at this point, so I'm sure you guys get the point of that. Um, but he is also from the Age of Apocalypse line, but then he came over and existed in the mainline universe as well. The third one is a little bit unique. Um, she appeared in only like two or three comics ever, as far as I know, and it's Spat and Grovel. Um, they are bounty hunters who uh, were looking for Gambit when he was about to go on trial for his past indiscretions. So... All that out of the way, let's go ahead and dig in. Um, the box art is cool. It looks like a most like a wanted poster, you know, like one of those dead or alive things. So up at the top, you've got Marvel's Most Wanted, a big uh, profile picture in the middle of the character, and um, and then it just informs you that it is a collector's edition. Pretty nice, pretty nice box art. All in all, let's go ahead and tear open here. Yeah, so like once you get that off, you see you have some unique box art on the cover. Uh, everything else is pretty bland down towards the bottom. Not really anything involved there. So this is this is a really good looking figure. Um, it looks like it's also tied down, so we've got a multi-level thing here. Um, she has. No articulation in the legs, uh, aside from her hips, which, um, like a lot of the female characters, they kind of, like, put the hips at a weird angle to make it look, I don't know, not too masculine or something, but I feel like often that's really unnecessary. Um, again, like some of these older figures, you've got some of this blue showing through in the, the, the paint, um, and I think it's just because of age. Um, I've seen that in several of these at this point. Uh, the skirt looks like it kind of clips on. It's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit misshapen. Um, I'm going to not mess with it too much because I don't want to damage it in any way. As far as the paint, the, the actual details of the paint go, they're really, really detailed. Her fingernails have a little bit of, of color on them. Her makeup is very uh, well done. It looks like they put a lot of time into the face. The shoulders have, you know, actual shoulders that can move around instead of just up and down. Her waist also moves, um, but I don't want to push too much on that because of the way that this skirt is fitting. And I'm sure I'll be able to kind of fix this off camera, but I don't want to futz with it too much. Um, it also has a cloak in here which is really nice looking like it's like double layered it's got a lining on the inside and velvet on the outside um really 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 pretty and actually 
made of fabric. Let's see how this looks when I put it over her head. Um, decent. I mean, it covers up a ton of the of the sculpting uh, around her her hair and her face, which I think is really kind of the highlight of the figure. So I wouldn't really want to cover all that up. Um, comes with a little bag full of arrows that she uses for her her teleporting power and it looks like some of these are supposed to come out oh yeah they do and they just sit nicely in her fingers hopefully yeah goes right in there really nice um this pouch, I don't really know where it's supposed to hang from, so let's just put it in her hand. How about that? Yeah, that looks good. Um, she also comes with a base, which I believe is meant to look like her teleporting ability. Her hand, between the doohickeys, and her foot. Also between the doohickeys. So I think the idea here is that you'd get her kind of in motion coming out of a teleporting device, and this would, like, stick to something so it could look like she's zapping through. I'll put this up and, and get a good picture of it once, once I'm not sitting here at the table. Um, but kind of a cool way of displaying the figure. I think this will go right up, right up on the wall. Um, and that should look really nice once we get her all going. Let's pick up all the little detail stuff because the, the accessories are teeny tiny with her. Really, really nice looking figure. Um, I would say that this is one of the best we've gotten, which is kind of to be expected towards the end of the series. You know, they've gotten all their, their kinks worked out. Um, I don't know that I'm going to keep the cloak on her just because it covers up so much of the sculpt. Um, but we'll get to that. At some other point, we'll decide. Okay. Ooh. Next up, we will dig into our X-Man figure. Uh, Nate Gray, the alternate reality version. Again, same kind of thing. Wanted poster. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get him open. Um, so he is a really great looking figure. Um... Hips and knees are normal, pretty standard. He does have ankle um, flexibility. His shoulders are not as nice as Blink's. Um, they're just regular up and down shoulders. Um, but the sculpt on everything, his face, his hands, his hair, the detail in his jacket is really, really nice. And honestly, the paint in his eyeballs is some of the best that we've ever seen. You can see like all the parts of it, the retina and the, and the iris and the pupil and everything, plus the tiny little reflection in his pupil. So really detailed paint work in there. He comes with a flaming, like, I don't even know what I call this, like a stand to make it look like he's exploding up out of it somehow. So it looks like this is meant to attach to his hand, which it's... Could have just his waist. Hmm. How about that? All right. So it's got that little explosions coming up off of it, and then this is meant to go around his waist, so he's flying, which is neat, and then this one is meant to connect You 
Yeah. You know, something something kind of like that. That was a lot of that was a lot of clipping things on. Um, it doesn't seem to fit the same way that it does in the picture, but I'll fiddle with this and see if we can get a good picture out of it, see if we can make it look right. Um, the idea is that he's got this psychic base. He hangs on it, and it shows all of his powers blasting around. Um, really good-looking figure. I mean, he, he looks great. The accessory's great. I think that more of those early Toy Biz things should have come with something like this, little plasticky bits that clip onto him. They eventually started doing that with the Marvel Legends toys, but like Havoc and Jean Grey and everybody like that would have looked cool with just a little clip-on energy bit. Um, so two winners so far, Blink and X-Man. Both look great. Spat and Grovel. Um, the deal with Spat, who I believe is the young lady, um, she ages backwards. So even though that she's an adult woman, she looks like a small child. Um, very Benjamin Buttony. Uh, and then her companion, Grovel, I don't really know what his deal is. If he's like a mutant who is misshapen, because he talks, like he, he speaks. So he's not an animal, um, but he certainly appears to be one. Um, and I believe, I think she rides him, which is kind of rude if he is a person who just looks weird. Um, he has a biting function. Oh, there we go. A little mouth pops open. A lot of detail in there. His teeth look cool. His tongue is all veiny and stuff. Um, not a lot of motion here. Everything kind of moves, but not very much. And I guess she doesn't ride him because she can't bend in any way. Um, she does come with her neat little spear. Which absolutely will not fit in her hand as it is. No, there we go. That's good. Um, a, a ton of detail on her, like her, her face and her, um, like gear all have like tons of detail in the paintwork. She's weird looking though. Like once you get in there, she's like really strange. Um, I guess I can't for the life of me think of why this figure would have been one of the most wanted figures I can think of about 30 that I would have rather wanted instead of this one, but here she is. Um, so she looks pretty cool. X-Man and Blink look really, really cool. They're fantastic. I will keep fiddling with this one and try to get them to look right. But uh, there you have it. The Marvel's most wanted line. At least two-thirds of them most wanted. Um, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I always appreciate you sharing these things with you. And if you know anybody who is interested in old toys and old dudes opening them, please suggest the uh, show to them. Thank you so much. As always, y'all have been wonderful, and I have been terrible. And we'll see you again soon.